Praise the Lord. God bless you. Happy to see you again in our midst. Today is your day of supply of every good thing you have lost in life. And God himself will make sure that as many as will cooperate with him today, how do you cooperate with God? By giving your life to Christ and confessing all your sin and learning to forsake them and then ask Jesus Christ for assistance and power to go and sin no more. Once you do that, no problem will survive in your life. I want to pray for you now, everybody. Father, I thank you on behalf of everyone that are hearing your word today. I'm asking, O oh God of heaven, that you will intervene where nobody has intervened before. And the thing that is called sickness and disease and infirmity and lack and poverty and calamity and misfortune and shame and reproach will no longer succeed in our life. I pray for all the people that you are speaking to today that there will be deliverance where nobody has been able to be delivered before. Lord, I pray to give every one of us a virgin testimony and do what no man can do in our lives, family, marriages, and our businesses. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let's talk about when wine finish. It is not possible for you to get a bottle of wine, a cup of wine, and start drinking and will not be able to finish it. It is not possible. But let me tell you something. Unknown to so many people, when their wine finish, they conclude it finish. They don't go for replacement. And because they don't go for replacement, they will live without wine. But the question is this, what is the purpose of wine in our life? To gladden our life. To gladden our heart. To bring happiness and joy. So when the wine in a marriage finishes, the next thing you may see is barrenness. You may even begin to experience partial separation. That your husband may live with you. But you know that this one is no longer with you. You may begin to, some people will even go to the extent of divorcing, thinking that that would be a problem. And when they remarry, they see hell. They see hell. The problem is this. You try to help yourself outside God. You try to bring wine into your cup. Yourself without God. And unfortunately, there are powers of darkness on this earth that can fill your bottle of wine, your cup of wine, and get intoxicated and illuminate your body with darkness and the things that will give you the desire to do what is wrong the rest of your life. No wonder why John was talking to some people. He told them, in John chapter 8, verse 32, that ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth. No wonder Hosea said also that my people perish because of lack of knowledge of God. No wonder. Why Amos said in Amos chapter 3, verse 3, that two cannot work together except they have an agreement to work together. Okay, no wonder why you are suffering. Because you once have enjoyed a good relationship that has wine. You once have enjoyed marriage relationship that has wine. You once have started your life that has wine. The wine we are talking about is the, not the wine that the devil gives, but the wine that Jesus Christ himself comes to give you. There was a man that wanted to conduct a marriage. The man knew that he is insufficient to provide for the people that want to attend his wedding, but by faith he invited everybody. And the greatest decision he took that Bible said they should be putting in the word of God, that God said they should put in his word, 
is inviting Jesus into the wedding day. Because, you know, he could not fight his battle to the end of the wedding. He knew what they had suffered in lack without Christ. My brothers and sisters, is there anything you want to do? Do you want to start a journey in life? Is there anything you want to do in life? First of all, the Bible said that if you want to build a house, you should have to sit down and think whether you have the material to start and finish. Now, let me ask you a question. Why do you think that people have poor finishing? They start very well and finish very poor. It's because of incontinuity. And the incontinuity is when somebody has Jesus Christ and they do not invite him to fight his battle with him. In John chapter 2, everybody go there. Are you there? Good. And the third day, there was a marriage in a city called Cana, in the bigger city called Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. There's no full stop in verse 1. But Jesus has not come. And both Jesus was called, extended invitation to. Jesus Christ was called. And his disciples also was called to the marriage. Invited to attend the marriage. I've heard people say, I don't know why God should give me this kind of man. I don't know why this God can give me this kind of woman. And I'll ask them, can you prove it's the word that gave it to you? I know the one that took the woman. Because of her beauty, because of her handsomeness, because of his money, because of his height, because of his color, because of his intelligence, because of anything you see physically, you rush into it. There are people who see their friends with money, with cars, with houses, with all the materials of life that makes life comfortable. And they rush into it. And their friends took them away from God to the devil into an occult group, into a witchcraft group, into the house of witch doctor, into the house of false prophet and prophetess, into the dead churches. And when they came to that place, they say they want wine. And they give them a cup filled with wine, mixed with, decision, with condition. Before you drink this wine, every month, somebody must die in your family. Before you drink this wine, every, before, in the next 10 years, your wife will die. Before you drink this wine, in the next 20 years, all your sons will die. Before you drink this wine, one part of your body will be used for sacrifice. And they agree. But I thank God for this young man and the lady in question. The bride and the bridegroom. They knew their limits. They have seen what their parents suffered in their family. They have seen other people who got married full of joy. But at the end of the day, the wine finished. What is the meaning of wine? Wine is the presence of Jesus Christ. What is the meaning of wine? Wine is invoking the power of prayer. I want to tell you something. Jesus may be in your life, but may refuse to manifest when you don't call him and tell him your situation. You say you're born again, nobody's adopted it. You say you're a priest, nobody's bought it. You say you're not dead, nobody's doubting it. You say you're sure of the call of God in your life. You don't know why all this is happening in your life. Nobody's doubting it. 
He said your prayer to whom? He said you're calling upon God to whom? Which God are you calling? Is it God with capital letter or small letter? Is it the God you honor human being? You honor departed saint before you call him? Is it God you, you join together with the saint who have finished their ministry and have gone and they are calling their name? The Bible said, for we have only one God, not two, and the one mediator that is between God and man. They ask you who is the person, you say the name is Jesus Christ. This man knew his limit. This man understand false doctrine. This man knew Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 that said, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy or vain deceit, through the tradition of the men, through the rudiment of the world, through anything you are doing, through the doctrine, with, but without Christ. Christ is the only way. The Bible said in John chapter 8, verse 36, that if the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, will set you free, nobody can bring you into bondage again. So, my brothers and sisters, in John chapter 2, verse 3, the man invited Mary, the man invited Jesus Christ, the man invited the disciples of Jesus, because everyone has room to pray. Mary herself, as the only person at that time who knew the purpose of God for Jesus Christ passing through her and giving the world to Christ, Mary knew that she's limited, enveloped and confined to some knowledge and cannot go further like Jesus. When they told Mary that the wine is finished, Mary did not struggle to do anything. What Mary did was to go to the person who can do all things. And his name is Jesus. And after that, there's something that Mary said that all of us should have to do. Mary said, from today, whatever he says unto you, do it. They never went back to Mary again. Neither did Mary say, I can do what Jesus can do. Mary, in the book of Luke, called Jesus Christ my Savior, meaning that she needed a Savior. Let's go to verse 3. And when they wanted the wine, the happiness in the family finished. The power that makes that business to prosper, the wine in it finished. The wine that keeps relationship finished. The wine that prospers the economy of the country finished. And everybody in the wedding hall wanted wine so that the joy will continue. The joy and the happiness of the marriage was terminated. And without doing the right thing, Without going the wrong way to look for wine, to look for joy and peace, to look for happiness, in the wrong place, you will be put into extra bondage. Because the Bible said that when evil spirit is cast out, and then coming back again, he will come with seven demons, and the state of that person will be worse than the before. When they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They had no wine. Full stop. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? You are the only person who knew I can do all this here. What do you want me to do? Question mark. Jesus said, This is John chapter 2. My hour to do this thing has not come. But because Mary was the mother, he has to do something. Let me tell you something. If Mary is here on earth and he asks her anything to tell Jesus Christ, to beg Jesus Christ, Mary will gladly do it. But the truth is here that Mary is no longer on earth. Where is she? She's in heaven. So whatever prayer you are praying here on earth is completely idolatrous because you are talking to the dead. And the spirit that is called familiar spirit will come and answer you to deceive you and delude you and make you to go far away from the Almighty God. But that's not the issue. The issue is this, that after Mary has spoken to Jesus Christ, because he was physically alive. Verse 5. His mother called the disciple that said unto the servant in the wedding. 
whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Mary separated herself. I handed over everybody to Jesus. Don't come to me again. That's what it means. John the Baptist said in John chapter 1 verse 20, that, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And all the crowd that are following him followed Jesus Christ. John the Baptist separated himself. And handed the whole universe over to the Creator, the Lamb that can take away the sins of the whole world. John the Baptist said, I cannot do that. Even the shoe, the, 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 the latchet of the shoe, I cannot even lose it. So please follow him. And people followed him. Mary said, whatsoever he said unto you, do it to back to me again. That's what I understand. God from heaven and said, This is my beloved son, in whom I will which is in whom I will please hear you. He, God separated himself. Go to him, he will come and get with me. And he's the mediator between God and man, between me and humanity. So go to him. God separated himself. What am I even saying? What am I saying? In the midst of all those things, something happened. Jesus was preaching in Luke chapter 11, verse 27 and 28. A woman in the midst who was possessed by the demon interrupted the teaching of the whole Jesus Christ and said, Blessed are the womb that body and the pap which thou sucked. Jesus Christ said, No, rather, instead of diverting people to the breast that baby, and the womb that the baby, blessed shall go to those who hear, who hear the word of God and do it. What is the word of God? Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. This is my only begotten Son, in whom I own please. What is the word of God? What Christ said, come unto me on that labor and the heavy laden, I will give you rest. He said again, I am the way, the truth, and the wife. Nobody goes to the Father except through me. So Mary said, whatever he says unto you, do it. And there we are set there, six water pots of stone. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three fuckings apiece. Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with ordinary water and they fill them up to the brim. What an obedience. These are the people that hear the word of God that do it. These are people that respected Mary, the mother of Jesus. He said in verse 5, whatever he says to it. And Jesus can tell them, fill the water pot. They didn't question him again. Mary has advised them. They didn't go to Mary and say, do we do this? No, 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 no. They can't do that. They fill the water pot to the brim. Verse 8. And he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor first of the feast. And they bar it and brought it to the governor. What did the governor say? Verse 9. When the Lula of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servant which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou who hast kept the good wine until now. What happened? I want to tell you something. There are people who came to the wedding, but they were not patient. So the, when the wine finished, and they needed more wine, they didn't wait for Jesus. They left the wedding ground. There are people who got married and they were so happy and they loved themselves. 
and they vowed never to leave each other in the, on the wedding day. And they had promised themselves many, many great things. And as we see vision, how God is going to bless the marriage. And eventually, what the wine of their marriage finished. They were not patient enough. They didn't go to Christ. They didn't return to Messiah. Out because of sickness and disease in the marriage, because of late conception, because of anti-conception forces, because of barrenness, because of lack of provision, because they lack every good thing, the wine of their marriage, the cup of the wine of their marriage were dried up. They separated. They divorced. And the angel that brought wine from heaven came. And very few were around. And those who were around, the cup of their joy, the cup of their peace, the cup of their desires were filled. But others angrily went away. Are you going to be in that condition? Why don't you have patience and pray to Jesus? And after praying, you wait for him. Many a matter waited for four days and they went and buried their brother. So even if you have buried their marriage, buried the business, if you are good things, everything that you have gotten in life has been buried. Jesus is here standing by the grave now. Wherever you are, as you call upon him to fill you with the wine of joy, a wine of happiness, to meet the needs of your people and family and the needs of your marriage, to revive that business and that thing which you are doing and to put something in your certificate and give you a good job and make you to live comfortable so the shame and reproach of the finishing of the wine will not continue in your life. You will get the best. Are you going to pray now? Which area of your life is lacking wine? Your spiritual life, your physical life, your, fina- your marital life, your academic life, is it your business? Is it any organ of your body that is lacking life and is dried up and sickness are coming to your liver, in your eyes, in your head, in your brain, in your hands, in every part of your body is lacking the good things of God that can make you to be happy? Are you having fibroid? Are you having anti-conception demon or tormenting you? Today, if you can go to Jesus and tell him exactly what you want, but before that, giving your life Christ is the most important thing. That's the road to Christ. He is the only because he's the only mediator between God and man. Go to him. He will not say no to you. The prayer you have been praying may not have been answered. The same thing happened to mother. It was answered in the spirit, but in the physical, it didn't manifest and Lazarus died. But when Jesus came, the Lazarus was resurrected. Are you ready for your Lazarus to come out of the grave? Father, I thank you. Because your word is everlasting. Your word cannot be changed. You are ubiquitous God. You know everything and you know them in details. Nothing can challenge you and stand. I'm praying, O God of heaven, that the dried cup of your hearers today, whose life are dried and the cup of joy and happiness that fill the cup with wine from heaven have been dried up. I pray you fill the water pots and let it be converted. Let everything around us be converted to miracle testimonies and breakthroughs and prosperity that comes from you that has no sorrow or richness that has no pain attached to it. I pray you bless everybody and water every part of our organ and bring to life every internal organ and external organ and make us to be fit to get the best of this life and to live comfortable and fulfilled destiny and to live this world joyful and coming to you in everlasting eternity. Thank you because we know ever said, let your will be done in our life. Extend this miracle to everybody who got to come in the whole world whose wine of happiness has finished in any area of their life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Hope you like our content. I beg you to listen to the YouTube channel, like and share, and then send your prayer requests. And subscribe to this YouTube, please.